Hi everyone, it's Jakub from Capturing Reality. Welcome to this complex beginner tutorial about creating your first 3D model in Reality Capture. I would like to show you the whole workflow of processing a project from start to finish. Certainly other users have different workflows and some steps can be switched or even skipped, but this tutorial should give you a good starting point. I will start by briefly talking about the images for this project. Then I will download Reality Capture, install it and use it anonymously in PPI mode. Before processing, we will look at the basic application settings. Then we will bring in two sets of images using the image layers. One set of images will be used for alignment and reconstruction. The second set will be used for texturing. Before alignment, we will check the alignment settings and I will show you what you can change if you are getting multiple components to help the alignment. After alignment, I will set the project scale using the Define Distance tool set the ground plane and reconstruct the model on normal detail. I will use the selection tools and the filtering tool to clean the model. With the clean model, we will be ready to texture the model, but before that, I will show you what options and settings are available for unwrapping and texturing the model. If we want to export our textured model or share it on Sketchfab, we are not done yet. The raw model will have too many triangles, so I will show you how to use the simplify tool to decimate the model to a more reasonable triangle count. I will show you how to bake the color, normal map and displacement map using the reprojection tool. This simplified model can be uploaded directly to Sketchfab, export for further processing in your 3D software of choice, or you can make renders and animations directly in Reality Capture and I will show you how. Since this is a beginner tutorial, I decided to recreate a simple statue from a public park. If you want to follow along, you can download the whole dataset already licensed with PPI credits from the link in the description. I provided images for the geometry layer and texturing layer. The statue was easy to access and there were no obstacles around it. Since it is outside and not in a studio, I also needed to plan according to the weather forecast. Of course, I wouldn't go outside if it was raining, but I wanted to take the images during an overcast day. The reason for this was that I wanted to eliminate hard shadows because they are difficult to eliminate from the texture. In a controlled environment like a studio, you can set up lights to perfectly delight the scanned object. When taking images outside, sometimes you don't have the luxury of time. So you need to set up your camera to shoot sharp images without noise and with significant overlap between each other in a short period of time. Keep track of your ISO, f-stop, which is the aperture and shutter speed. Each one is equally important and they relate to each other. If you change one, you have to compensate with the other two. Keep the ISO as close to 100 as you can get. The ISO controls the sensor's light sensitivity. Use a smaller aperture, that means a larger f-stop number, to increase the depth of field. Try to use a fast enough shutter speed to avoid motion blur. Okay, so first let's start by looking at the images. Here on my desktop, I have a folder called statue and I will use it to store everything related to this project. When I open it, there is another folder called images. In it, there are raw images straight out of my camera. I processed those in raw image editor and exported two sets of JPEGs. The first set for the geometry layer will be used during alignment and reconstruction. The second set for the texture 01 layer will be used obviously for texturing. Let's look at the geometry layer first. It consists of 145 images of the statue and we can check a few of them now. I started taking images by making a loop around the statue in a way that the whole statue was in the frame. It doesn't have to be like that, but in this case, the object was relatively small, so I decided it can help. This loop serves as the base of the overall alignment, and it also helps to align the close-up shots of the details. We can also check a few of the close-up images. Here at the bottom of the folder, I have a few close-ups of the head. These following images are containing my scale and color reference. I will use them to give my model the proper real-world scale and white balance the images. Ok, we can close that and check what camera settings I used. To check those, right-click on the image and display properties. Here you can see the camera settings that were used for this image. The aperture at f11 to increase the depth of field. Shutter speed of 1 tenth of a second because the camera was on a tripod. ISO at 100 to eliminate the noise. I use the 24mm prime lens on a full frame mirrorless camera. I usually do not use a tripod because I'm scanning much larger objects and simply do not have the luxury of time. In those cases, 
I try to keep the aperture around f10, shutter speed is set to a double of the focal length, for example for a 24mm focal length, I would use at least 1 50th of a second. I compensate for the aperture and shutter speed by the ISO setting and by taking lots of images. If I show you another image that was shot using a monopod, I use different settings for the camera. Aperture of f10, shutter speed of 1 40th of a second and ISO 200. I was trying to maintain the aperture, but I needed a faster shutter speed to eliminate the motion blur and I compensated the less amount of light by increasing the ISO to 200. Now let's compare the same image from the geometry layer and the texture layer. The first image on the left is from the geometry layer and the second one on the right is from the texture layer. By taking images during an overcast day I eliminated the presence of harsh shadows but some ambient shadows still remained. I hope you can see that the right image from the texturing layer is washed out. I lowered the brightness of the highlights and added brightness to the shadows and darks. It's because I wanted to eliminate the ambient shadows as best as I could. For the geometry layer I just used the original image with increased contrast. Just a reminder, you need to use the original distorted images in reality capture with no geometry adjustments. Use only color and light adjustments. So those were the images and now let's download reality capture. I will open my web browser and search for capturing reality. Just to clear out the confusion, capturing reality is the name of the company and reality capture is the name of the software. To download the software, click on the big bright sign saying download now. The download will start automatically after a few seconds and in the meanwhile I recommend you to subscribe to get the latest updates about reality capture and even tutorials like this one. I promise we will not spam you very often. Another thing that I suggest checking out is the help section of our website. Here you can find resources, tutorials, articles or FAQ to find quick answers. For example, let's check the FAQ on how to remove the large triangles that Reality Capture creates during reconstruction. It is located in the application sections and removal of large triangles. And here it is explained how to do it step by step. Reality Capture is downloaded and now I can install it. By default it should be in the download folder. Double click to start the installation. You need to agree with the end user license agreement, select your installation folder and click on install. After the installation is done, click on finish. To start Reality Capture, just double click on the icon. But since I already had Reality Capture installed before and it remembers my settings, I need to restore the application to its defaults. To do this, hold down the shift key and double click with your left mouse button on the icon. I will select make it a clean install. Reality Capture detected that I have another solid state drive and it recommends me to use it for my cache location. Yes, I agree with that. Now I have to activate Reality Capture. If you have a license, you would log in with your credentials, but I will use it anonymously in PPI mode. I am the only user of this computer, so I do not need to check the first box. And the second box is a reminder that PPI projects cannot be opened with other license types and are locked to the computer they were created on. PPI stands for Pay Per Input. You can use the software for free and when you are satisfied with the results and want to export them, you will license your inputs. From that moment, you can export the results as many times as you want. You can even export the licenses and share them with the images to someone else. This can be very useful in classrooms. The teacher can share the licenses to the students and the students can reprocess the images and export the results on their own computers for free. When launching Reality Capture for the first time, you will be welcomed by this screen. From here you can open the help or start our step-by-step -step tutorial. I will choose the step-by-step -step tutorial because it will guide me and also explain some new terms and settings in more detail. The very first step is to import the images. The tutorial is telling me that I have three options on how to do this. I can use the inputs icon to select individual images, I can use the folder icon to import whole folders with subfolders or I can drag and drop the images and folders directly in the user interface. If you don't have any of your own images, you can download one of our samples. You can also choose a sample containing laser scans or aerial images. I will import the images by drag and dropping them. First, I need to find them in the explorer. I could drag and drop both the geometry layer and texture 01 layer together, but I will only import the geometry layer for now because I want to show you something later. Now we can continue. 
The images are loaded, but right now we only see the tutorial in this large view. Reality Capture can work with multiple views at the same time, and it arranges these views into layouts. The layouts can be switched here at the top or here in the Workflow tab. For now, I will choose the 1 plus 1 plus 1 layout. The leftmost view displays thumbnails of the loaded images. The middle view displays the currently selected image, and the rightmost view shows the context help view. I will briefly describe the application user interface. The application ribbon helps dividing tools and commands with respect to the purpose of use. I can switch between the Workflow tab, Alignment tab, and Reconstruction tab. The Workflow tab can be used for launching the map wizard, adding images, laser scans, video sequences, ground control points, and other metadata. If you don't need the more advanced options, the whole processing can be done right from this tab. The application settings are located at the end to the right. Next, the Alignment tab. From here, we can start the alignment, change the alignment settings, we can add control points, define distances, analyze the alignment, use camera and point selections, export the alignment or import previous alignments. The Reconstruction tab serves for creating the model, colorizing and texturing it, changing its orientation, selections, various tools for processing the model, and finally exporting the results and importing. If I select a certain view, for example this middle 2D view containing my selected image, I will get another contextual tab. This contextual tab changes based on what kind of view I select. First, let's change the leftmost view from 2Ds to 1Ds. This view is only available in the leftmost view. It displays hierarchical relations among all objects. Right now, it shows that I imported 144 images and so far I added zero control points. When I click on this little plus sign, I will get the list of all images that were loaded to Reality Capture. By left-clicking my mouse button on the names of the images, I can switch between them. Notice this little blue color cursor. The same blue color is assigned to this 2D view. You can also notice this is a little green color cursor, but it is not assigned to any other view. If I want to move the green cursor to another image, I need to hold the number 2 key and left-click on the image name. But right now, nothing changes because the green color is not assigned to a view. To change the 2D view from displaying the blue color to the green color, I need to select the view and switch to green in the Image Context tab. Now when I click through the image labels with the press number 2 key, the 2D view will display the selected images. If I want to see the blue color cursor selection together with the green one, I can change the layout. I will switch to the 1 plus 2 plus 1 layout. It created a 3D view. I will get back to the 3D view later. Right now, I will switch it to a 2D view and assign the blue color to it. Now, when I click without holding any number key, the bottom 2D view changes. If I hold down the number 2 key, the top 2D view changes. In total, you can assign 4 color cursors. If I want to move the image in the 2D view, I just click on it and drag the mouse. If I want to zoom in or out, I can use the mouse scroll wheel. At the bottom of the 1D's view, we can see the information about the current selection. We can see the file name, camera model, resolution and other information. We can enable or disable the image from certain steps of the processing. Now I will add the Texture01 image layer. I still have my folder opened. I will select the folder and drop it in the user interface. Did you notice what happened? The image count stayed the same, but a texturing layer was created. Now I can switch between them in the 2D view. I will select the 2D view and change the input layer in the context image tab. Now I'm looking at geometry and now at the texture layer. One more time, texture, geometry. I can also switch between them by pressing the tab key on the keyboard. Now I have all the images in Reality Capture. But before going further, I want to quickly check the application settings. Like I mentioned before, they are located in the Workflow tab. In the settings, I can enable or disable automatic updates or check for updates right now. The log file creation is enabled and I will quickly show you where you should look for it. I will start with my system drive C. Just a reminder, you need to enable visibility of hidden items. The path continues in Users, Username, App Data, Local. I have to find the temp folder and in it, when I type the letter R, the explorer will jump to the Reality Capture log file. Click on it to open it and here 
You see that so far I just imported the images. Next are the import settings. I can enable group calibration by EXIF, but I do not have to do that. I can always group them later manually. Later I will show you how. We can also ignore inaccurate GPS EXIF data. In the coordinate systems settings, you can change the project and output system. I will do this project in the local Euclidean coordinate system. If you would like to change it, just click on the current one and choose a new one from the database. Next, you can configure the start button. It is this button right here. By pressing it, Reality Capture will align the images on high setting, select the greatest component, reconstructs the model on normal detail, and uses coloring instead of texturing. You can change any of these settings. For example, I want Reality Capture to generate the texture, and now it will generate the texture with the current texturing settings. Another interesting feature is the screen grabber that will record your workflow in Reality Capture. You can specify where to save your recording and change the quality settings. In the licenses, you can change between different application owners, change for offline use or remove the current license activation. The global settings serve for exporting and importing your global settings. Now I will close all the panels in the one this view and that will be the end of this part. In the next video, we will start with the alignment.